we are going to cover today uh, basically the use of methods in um, electronic reporting. So in the, in the model mapping, the use of methods to get data from uh, the system or to process data, to validate data, to whatever, whatever logic we need to, to execute. So basically the methods um, in ER are accessed mainly from four different object types that they are, um, let me create here. We have instance object types and we have, th these empty containers are just um, to organize the, the, different, the different objects. And we have static object types. Okay, so instance objects, like for example, table records. When we are working with a cast table, uh, we, have, we can have table records or we can have the object table. What is the difference between these two? The second one is an instance. So it will have actually the data of the specific records. You have customer one or two or, or every, every, every customer. And the table is just a class behind the scenes. That table is actually a, a, an object um, that is in, in code is a class and it can have static methods. So when we talk about table, we are talking about the static methods. Let's add one example to see what I mean. If you're a developer, you're gonna understand this a lot easier. But if not, let's just see it. We can have the cast group table object and that will give us access to the methods that are static. That means they can be consumed from whatever we, uh, sorry, from whatever we want. And since they are static, you don't have to have a specific cast group record or a specific cast group object to call that method. So for example, find, find by company, you can add this table object that it's just the static methods, use a find, and then you will have a record, a table record um, object. On the other hand, if we add the, the same table, but as a table record, what we are gonna add is the data. And we are going to have also methods inside this data. We have fields, we have relations, but we have also methods. You can see, for example, the methods here, uh, clearing period, we have, for example, this is a method, but these methods are instance methods. So you need the record to run these methods. Okay. So in, if we, for example, want to use the find by company, how do we use this? Well, we can create a new calculated field and use the find by company to get a specific customer group. And that will guess that will uh, give us a customer group records. So for using the find by company, we need to have the company ID and the customer group ID. So I want to check for the USRT. Okay. The, I want to get the one USRT customer group because here in, we are in USMF, but we need the, we need to get the retail one. Okay. It's let's do that. Let's do that. Um, as an exercise to understand what we are going, what we are doing. So let's create a calculated field. Remember that a calculated field is just a variable where we put whatever we want. Retail cast group, the retail cast group is part of the, um, of another, of another company. So we are going to use the method from the cast group find by company. 
so we can see how to use this method. This is a static object, so we don't have to have the, the instance. And how do we use methods with parameters? Basically, you put the method. This is different than uh, using it from code directly. Because you put the method, you close the parentheses here. This, this is just the name of the method. And then you pass the different parameters. So if we check, if we take a look, uh, this find by company was expecting the data area ID, USRT, and the cast group. So let's put here retail. Since remember we wanna we wanna retrieve this. So this this record. Save and this will return okay. So in our calculated field, we are having a record because this returned a record. And inside that record, we're going to have, look, the same, absolutely the same information than we had in the table records because it's a record of type cast group. So we have static objects and instance objects. We, this object is, is an instance object that we got from using a static method from this static object, the cast group. So class is the static class, meaning that this object will give us access to the static methods of a class. And object is the equivalent when we talk about classes, but of an instance, okay? I don't know if I am, maybe this is a little bit confusing, but let's, let's keep it simple and let's, let's use this example for example. So let's, let's test what we've done here. If we go to name, we bind the retail group, the retail cast group name. And let's now test to run our format. It's working. Retail customers. So what we did actually here is we went to the global cast group table object here. That is this is of type table. And that gave us access to the static methods of the table cast group. Then we basically use the find by company static method that was expecting the company ID and the customer group ID. And we save that into a variable that was of type table records. In, in this case, it's just table record without the records. And that means that we already have a record of the cast group. So, do you understand the difference? This cast group object has nothing to do with the data. It's just the static logic of the table. This retail cast group is actually the data of the specific record that we retrieved using the static method find by company. Okay. So what happens if I add this just table records cast group? What I am doing here is just adding all the cast groups without any, any type of of filtering or anything. So could I do the same using the table records? Of course I could. I could make it cross company and then filter, making a calculated field to filter by the USRT, data area ID and the retail. And I will get exactly the same. So we have different, different ways to get to, to the same solution. What happens is if I just bind this cast group uh, table records and I map the name. What it's going to happen is that it's going to show all the records in the cast group. This is a record list. So we have a table records that has a multiplicity and we are mapping it to a record list. So we are going to show in our XML as many records as records are in the cast group um, table 
for this particular data area ID because we didn't add any filtering. Let's see. Let's see how it goes if we run the format right now. There you are. We are seeing this first one that was the one we retrieved using the, the retail customers. And then we are finding all of these ones. USMF here under the record. And in the field string one, we are retrieving a USRT a customer group. So that's um, regarding the tables. In, in terms of objects of class versus object, it's a little bit different because class is exactly the same. If we add a class, for example, a very useful class you, might, you, you may uh, use is, I don't know, let's say um, global. Well, you, where you're going to have a lot of uh, static logic that you can use. Of course, you can create your own ER helper. If you want to do something that you're going to um, probably logic that you're going to reuse many times, please create a, just a static class with static methods and put there your logic. Here you can see how many different methods we have. It's just the object we have there, for example, current user language that can be very useful under some circumstances um, and many other things like for example if we were to if we were to know the uh, current um, data area ID you can always add the table company info and get the find use the find to get the current company info you know and talking about the objects it's a little bit more complex because you are adding an instance of that object that by default won't be uh, initialized. So it's just going to be a null object. And we only do that. We only add directly this object when we plan to from whenever from wherever we are running the ER. We are going to provide that object. An example of this is the, for example, the sales invoice. If we go to the sales invoice um, model mapping, we're going to see how we have there some objects. And these objects, if you just take a look at the ER, you might just wonder where are these objects being fulfilled? Like we have this object of class sales invoice data provider. The sales invoice data, data provider is going to have both methods that are instance methods and also variables in it. So where is this information being filled? It is done by code. The code that is running this will provide that object. In fact, we are using uh, this mechanism in our solution and the solution I, I shared with all of you um, to run ERs using a, a data contract, we are actually putting the object, the data contract in the, in, the, in the model mapping. And whenever we run that data contract, we are basically sending, sorry, whenever we run that, the ER, we are basically telling the ER, hey, uh, I am going to send you this object and please parameterize where this object or to which object this data contract needs to be mapped. That's what we are doing. Uh, if you're curious about it, just take a look at the at the, um, the video. And that's more or less it. I, I hope this is not very complex to follow. Mm, to fully understand it, it can be a little bit complex, but to use it, you don't have to fully understand it sometimes. Just mm, just get the idea of we have table and class that will grant us access to the static methods and we have object and table records that are instances so they will actually have data in it.
in them. Thank you, that's, that's all. I hope this uh, video helped you. This is not a very like beginner, sorry, beginner level video, but I think it adds a lot of value. I have received a lot of, of, a lot of questions um, related with not understanding properly this, this concept. Thank you, uh, thank you for watching the video and see you in, in next videos. Goodbye.